So a few years ago, I did a video on how to trigger sounds in Unity 3.5, and that got a lot of views and uh, you know a lot of questions and you know and answers that are going back and forth with some of the viewers. And uh, as the versions changed, there were some modifications that needed to be done. And you know there have been enough you know questions recently with the 5.0 release. Uh, when am I going to do an updated version of that video? And so that's what this is. This is an update for how do you trigger sounds in Unity. Now 5.0 came with quite a few enhancements to the audio system. Actually, the audio system was scrapped and redone. And so we have quite a few options when it comes to to actually playing sounds now. And so some of the options are to use this whole new mixer setup mixers and snapshots so we can actually transition with the whole mix instead of just one audio clip but in this video we're just going to talk about how do you use the audio source so you have a one-to-one -one relationship to how the previous video was done so to get started we're going to first jump into our audio clips folder I have this uh, music orchestra <clears throat> excuse me that I want to play. And I want to play it when the character gets just about in this area. And so I'm just going to grab this and just drop it into the scene. And so this is actually the the WAV, I believe, format or MP3 that was dropped in here. And so when you drop it into the scene, you're going to see it's going to have it's going to come in as a as a game object and it's going to have the audio source all already attached and it's going to have an audio clip. Now, I'm going to take this, I'm just going to drop this into our sounds folder, just so it's easier to see, and I'm going to create an empty game object. Now, you don't have to do that. Uh, if you want, you can actually go ahead and do it on the sound itself. Uh, you know what, let's do that. I might just make it just a little easier for you to see. And I can show you another technique. Um, besides just using public variables, you can actually access the game components, which you do a little bit differently with Unity 5. And so we have our audio source here, and the, the biggest difference between the current audio source and the previous audio source is going to be the spatial blend. So before you had the notion of choosing whether you wanted a 2D or 3D sound, uh, now that's actually grouped in the spatial blend, which is more of a hybrid. So it allows you to do a little bit of both. So if you wanted to do straight 2D, keep this at zero. If you want to do a little bit of a blend, then all you have to do is increase it. And uh, obviously one will make it full 3D. And that's the, really the only thing that will make a big difference between the old version and the current version. And so with that selected, we want to make sure we still have this game object selected. Let's add a box collider. So we add a box collider, and we just want to make the size just a little bit bigger. So the player can actually run into this. There you go. I believe that the height wise that should be good, but we'll just increase the height just in case. And so basically when the player comes into this area, we want to play this sound. And the next thing we want to do is we need our script. So we're going to the Passion 47 folder. And I've created a sounds trigger script, which we can just drag and drop it right onto our source. Or if we wanted to, we can actually add component and do it that way as well. And so this is just a basic class uh, or with really nothing in there. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to do void on awake. So actually, that's one of the reasons why I love using Visual Studio. You don't have to remember or type everything. <laughs> but on awake, we want to we want to set up our script. But before we do that, let's set up our public variable. So we want to do public audio source. And we want to just call this source. And if we want to, we can also do public um, audio clip. and call it clip. Now we don't have to set the clip because this is going to be already set for us. But if we want to use another clip, we can actually swap them out as well. 
So on a wig, we want to actually grab the audio source. Now this is something that's different from previous versions. In previous versions of Unity, you could have just you know um, used audio source, and it, it would have automatically sorry audio. <laughs> You could have used audio source and then you could have just play. And it would have just automatically grabbed an instance of the audio source for you. In in the current version, you can't do that because there's been an overhaul to the whole scripting um of of um grabbing components in Unity. And so what we want to do then is is actually set our source equal to and we're gonna have to use get component and this is C sharp, so you know everything is going to be strong type. So we want to get component, and we want to get the component audio source, and then um, pass that. Now, if we want to get a clip, we can do that too, or if we can have the clip preset. Now, the other thing we want to do now is, is we want to have our trigger. So we can do trigger enter on trigger enter. When we don't. We don't care at the moment what enters, whatever enters, we're just gonna play this. You can do other, um, you know, and check to see if it's the, um, you know, what tag it is, and compare a tag and see if, uh, you know, if it is a player or if it's a type of object, so you can play a sound. But we're just gonna keep this nice and, and simple. And what we're going to say is, is when you get to this point, we just want to say the audio source play, and that's all we want to do. Now, what's not going to happen is this audio source is not going to play. And the reason for that is, is when we did create this, um, this collider, we didn't set its trigger to true. And so I'm just going to set its trigger to true, and we're going to save it. Now, when we hit play, make sure this is disabled. You'll actually hear that sound already playing. And if I move over and I come in this area, the sound plays again, which is okay. It's not not what we're looking for. It's true, <laughs> but you can see it's working. You know, we're getting the sound to trigger. However, the problem that we're running into is is if we if we make sure that our, our current sound is uh, game object is clicked. We'll actually see we have this play on awake enabled, and so because play on awake is enabled, it automatically plays this, the the sound, and so we can actually go ahead and move this just a little further, because we you know you haven't started the game until you actually started the game. So uh, let's move it over, and now you see nothing is playing. I can look around, uh, you know I can see how this world is, and then. I see that I, I have this, you know, the structure I can get to. And once I get close enough, you can hear that playing. And obviously this will keep happening every time I get here. Which you may or may not want, you know, and if, if you don't want it, you know, because I've actually had this question a lot too, is, is how do you play an audio play um an audio clip only once? Well, there are a number of ways that you can do it. In this instance, we only have one audio clip playing, so you know it's a little easier. Um, and what we can do is, is we're, we're going to make this a private um, boolean, and we're going to call it um, is played. And we don't have to set it to false here, but you can actually do that here in the awake is played is equal to false and all this is all this boolean is going to let us know is, is when this does trigger do we or do we not play it um, and so in this case we're just going to, to quickly wrap this up in an if statement uh, and we're going to say if is play actually if is played is false and so by adding the explanation point, we're, we're negating this. So is played is false, which it currently is. We're going to play the sound. But after that, we're going to set is played to true. And so now when we go back into our game, I'm going to hit play. Once again, don't hear anything. We get towards the edge. Boom. Oh. 
Ah. It's horrible. I did this at an event one time. I did this whole, you know, uh, I forgot what it was, but I did an event where I actually played a, a game I developed. It was horrible because I couldn't even beat the own, my own game. Let's, I think I made a basketball game at some point. Um, but here you go. So now I'm on the other side. Now you'll notice something. The sound didn't play. And that's because it was already set because we played the sound once. Now some there are some other things. I don't know if you can hear it, but when we play the sound, it's actually playing from... Uh, it sounds like it's playing from one area more than it is another. And so if you wanted to... Uh, you know, to make those modifications, and you have the ability to to pan it to to either left or right, to the left or right on uh, uh, stereo system. Also, when your um, audio comes in, you can also change it between stereo and mono. Uh, the volume can be something else that that might be important. If you want to change the volume, you can do it in um, either here or you can do it by using it in code. And so, if we wanted to change the volume. Uh, we could have, uh, let's say, we can do it here. We can say source.volume, and we can change the volume here. Um, but I, I like changing it. You know, you know, unless you need to do something specific, I would rather keep it in the interface because then you know for sure you know that this is where the volume is and this is what it's supposed to be. And the only other thing that you could do is to set this to loop. And so by setting it to loop, it's actually going to it's gonna negate what we just did with having it um, only play once. But you can see the volume's a little lower now. But it'll just keep playing. And so what we can do is, is if we wanted to, we can actually... Um, we won't duplicate this, but if we, what we could do is, is we could say, um, and, you know, because the idea I had was, is if we if we had two different game objects, I would have went the route of duplicating this. But let's say I want the audio to only trigger when you're in a specific zone, right? So think about it. This could be a room where you only want, let's say, somebody is playing. Uh, you know, they have a, a nice audio system and, and they're they're bumping to music inside of the you know inside of a room and office space, and you want only in the office space for that um, audio to be played. Well, you can do this. Right now, what we're doing on trigger enter, and so what we can do is is we can make this a lot larger. So let's make this just a little larger. I'm going to take. Actually, we're gonna keep loop on. And what I want to say is, is once you get out of this trigger area, we want this to stop playing. And what this will do is, is this will pretty much give us the ability. I'm going to cheat and make this thing just a little bit more friendly, and also duplicate it so I have more options. <laughs> game design, environment design, fun stuff. And so what I want is, is once you pass this, I want to stop playing this audio clip. That's pretty much what, what we're going to do here. This is probably not even spaced correctly, but there's nothing like doing it in real time. All right, so now what I want to do is if I click back on this sound, wherever it is, there you go. So once you get into this area, we want the sound to play. But once you get out of it, we want it to stop. And so you see where this box is? It's pretty much where all of uh, these rocks are. Once you get in there, we play your audio. Once you get out, we stop. And so the way we do that is, is we come into here. We still have is played on. But what we're going to add now is, is we're going to add a new uh, method. And it's going to be trigger exit. Now, we don't need to worry about the is played because when the trigger um, exits, well, I guess for good measures, we should throw it in there. Uh, no, it's just it really has no bearing. It's not going to do anything for us. Well, what I was thinking of is just throwing the is played to true. If it's played, then you can stop it. But you can also check the audio source to see if it's currently playing. And so we don't need to worry about that. We can actually do source 
die um, is playing, which is still a Boolean. Same thing that we were doing before, but then we don't have to worry about, you know, any random cases that happen here. If it's currently playing and you're exiting this trigger area, I want the source to stop. And now if we go back to our game, and I'm going to hopefully make it across this time. <laughs> Okay, so nothing's going on. I'm going to put the volume up um, so you can hear it more. And so we come across here, across here. Let's let this thing loop one more time. Boom. And there you go. It stopped automatically. So I hope this covered just about everything you can do with, with the source in regards to triggering the sound. It, this is a technique that we use all the time as Unity developers. And it's just simply trigger in and trigger out. And this this will definitely limit the amount of coding that you have to do with having multiple um, objects and having, and having to share the audio source and do all that. So I, I hope this helps out. If you have any questions, please drop a line. Um, you know, I'm I'm always watching. I may not always be able to to respond right away, but you know, I get the emails. And I'm always you know keeping tabs on um, you know on on the community. Uh, you can always hit us up on passion47.com. Um, you can also hit us up. I've actually been quite busy doing um, Project Tango videos, so I haven't been updating my own. But if you check out our Passion 47. Uh, um, YouTube channel, you actually see some of more about this example. I've been doing quite a few things on Project Tango and, and kind of just you know showing what we've been working on. Uh, next in this series is actually going to be using it with the audio mixer. So look out for that. Same thing again, just this time a little more advanced. This is Edison Abelard. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm out.